Anyway, we have a, uh, a big menu today, <laughs> but um, as an academic, I, I cannot continue without, uh, first of all, uh, recognizing some of my uh, colleagues here. Uh, General David uh, Risco is Vice President uh, for Strategic Issues Studies at the Potomac right here. Uh, you will hear from me a little bit later on. And Lori Kinney, who is Director of Communications, and she's taping it so our colleagues, uh, the wider audience will be able to see it. And finally, I would like to recognize our summer interns who are contributing a great deal to our uh, work. Uh, Evan, would you uh, try to introduce them very quickly so people would know what we're doing? Uh, go sit down, stand up real quick. And then uh, maybe say your name and the school that you, uh, you represent. Let's start with Phil. Lauren Shore, Cornell University. Isabel Casadio, Wellesley College. Dylan Jones, Vanderbilt University. Katarina Albino, Catholic University. Caroline Arbaugh, University of Georgia Law. Erica Gibb, New England Law, Boston. Um, Chris Kelly, Trinity College. Naomi Pike, University of California, San Diego. And Josephine Naroni, South Korea College. Caitlin Espen, University of Michigan. Thank you very much. And finally, last but not least, I, I would like to uh, introduce Bill Mays right here from the International Law Institute, who coordinated our work and research on the uh, publications, and uh, is also a uh, editorial advisor for the NATO publication, uh, and so forth. So again, I, I think uh, we try to communicate to you that uh, we're working uh, <coughs> very energetically on some of the challenges and we would like to share it with you. Uh, those of you who might be interested in uh, this report or the report about uh, North, North Africa or any of the other reports, uh, please uh, let our staff know about this and we'll get you uh, copies. Now I would like to move on, I think then really put it in a nutshell, what are some of the challenges, the uncertainties about the uncertainties uh, in the Middle East and the atrocities that is unfolding uh, in, in Syria and the, the big problem with, uh, with Iran, which is not only the nuclear issue but the terrorism issue that we followed for decades. Again, let me uh, remind you that what we're trying to focus on, and we have a very distinguished uh, panel, is uh, the role, for example, of the international community, international institutions. Of course, you have unilateral responses, you have bilateral, but for example, I think we have to look also, one of the options, the UN, particularly because the UN obviously, as you know, is involved also peacekeeping uh, operations, uh, some 17 current operations and so on, and uh, the question is whether the UN uh, is uh, capable of uh, responding to some of these challenges. Uh, the other one, obviously, that uh, we are working very closely with is uh, NATO. According to different uh, analysis, NATO is one of the most uh, successful military alliances uh, in history. It's too early to reach uh, final conclusion, but at any rate, it does possess, uh, as we know, military capability the necessary command and control. And here we're talking about 28 countries whose major tasks are collective defense, crisis management, cooperative security through partnership. And then, of course, uh, Dan also mentioned the European uh, Union. We talk about 27 countries, principally an economic union, but at the same time developing defense and security capability. And then OSCE, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in uh, Europe, uh, which has about 56 uh, members um, in Europe, in Asia, in Americas, and, and so forth. And they are interested both in the art power and the soft power. And finally, I think another option is to consider perhaps the ad hoc coalitions 
which are designed to be specific uh, situations like the Libyan operation uh, last year or the first Iran-Iraq uh, war and the uh, Iraq war in 2002 and so forth. And uh, as you know, these ad hoc operations, uh, they generally authorized by UN Security Council resolution. So the question is, do we have to develop some ad hoc mechanism for command and control uh, to deal with this uh, issue? So I'm going to call on our very, very distinguished panel to provide another framework uh, on, on these uh, challenges and the options for a response. Again, I, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into details, but uh, for example, uh, Professor Ruth uh, Wedgwood is uh, very well known in Washington and around the world. Uh, she is a uh, professor of international law and diplomacy and director of international law organization program at size. And she has a very rich uh, experience in, in government, in the academic work. Uh, she is a, a former professor at Yale uh, Law School and uh, has uh, extensive uh, publications. And she graduated from Harvard and Yale. 